Hey guys, and welcome back to Xenoblade Chronicles! Wait a minute. You smell that? Oh yeah, that's unmistakable. Love is in the air. I can smell it. Either that or it's all the effing pollen in the pollen works. Last episode, guys, we stopped a drug cartel. And in this episode, well, it's time to see what the two lovebirds are up to. Shulkin Fiora, Johnny? No! Ryan and Melia, it's a ship for someone out there, some deranged lunatic whose name happens to be Johnny Awesome. Listen, it's not true love, but the heart is the symbol of St. Valentine's, who, fun fact, was not a romantic, instead had multiple hearts. Anyways, the purple affinity, heart to heart, between a Ryan and Melia, the ancient wreckage. It sure has been a long time since we've been up here. Oh man, those halcyon days. How strange. That such a ship crashed here. You know what this thing is? How could I not? This is an Alchemoth trading ship. It would have been used to transport either cylinders. Oh, oh, what? So you're saying this is a high Entius ship? Well, yes, I'm saying exactly that. Do you not recognize the design? You saw many similar ships in Alchemoth. Uh, uh, uh I don't know. We were a bit tied up. <laughs> True, you were rather preoccupied. In any case, I can't help but wonder... If the people that crashed here are still alive? Yes, precisely. It is possible that one or more people survived the crash, but it would have been a tall order from them to get back to Alchemoth. It's a long trip, that's for sure. If they were high into you, they'd stick out like a sore thumb. They would be easy prey for monsters. The ship must have crashed here a very long time ago, but even the High Enti of old should not have come here. They should have known better. This sounds pretty complicated. But I can tell you're upset. How about we give these guys a break? Whoever they were. You're getting to know me well. I do say some harsh things. And yes, perhaps it is to mask my own distress. I am grateful for your presence, Ryan. Without you here by my side, I fear I would be far more upset. Oh, great. I was just going to ask if there was anything I could do. <laughs> do not act so surprised, Ryan. You know full well that you've cheered me up. Was that not why you came over and spoke to me in the first place? I can see why Shulk holds you in such high regard. D I I hold, hold on. What was that part about why I came over in the first place? If you figure that stuff out, you're not, you're not meant to say it. I mean, let's just get out of here. <laughs> you know, you still look a little silly brute, even when you blush. Perhaps it might be advisable to stop doing so. Now let's rejoin the others. Thank you for all your help, Ryan. <sighs> How can you not love this guy? He's such a ladies' man. And Ricky, he was third wheeling like a boss. You gotta love the guy. Now that that heart-to-heart -heart is complete, we sort of are kind of aimless. I'll be totally honest with you. I try to, like, theme these episodes, like, around, like, you know, just one sort of idea, but, uh, I'm kind of out of ideas. Now, at this point, we're kind of just wrapping up some loose ends. Believe it or not, there's only three missing quests in Alchemoth, so, hey, why don't we stop by here and maybe work on those? I will definitely need Charlotte in the party at some point, though. How should I go about this? Yeah, she can lead. I think that's fine. The first quest I want to take on is right over here with Talia. I always like that name. Hi there. Me? Yes, you. So let me guess. You're the travelers that everyone in town is talking about. Are we that famous? <laughs> I don't know. I've heard all about you from Professor Norath and Ruthen. Hopefully good things. I am on the same research team as those two, you see. They talk about you quite a bit. Flash forward. Oh, you gotta have Shulk in the party to get this one. Whoa. I should go to the Palace of Judgment in Satoru Marsh. Perhaps I will make a major discovery about our history. Hey, then, Smelly Melly, just talk about why the people of Alchemar shouldn't leave. Wait, how do you know that I'm going to head to the site of the ruins? Yes, I'm fully aware of the potential dangers there, but come now. It's my scholarly pursuit. Do not worry. I'm making solid preparations. I've brought enough water for two whole days. <laughs> the results of our research are finally within our grasp. Now is not the time to be hesitant. Uh, okay. Is that all? 
If so, I think I'll be going now. Dang, she'd not even let us get a word in edgewise. I do not wish to be disturbed, so please do not follow me. All right, Dan. Talia's research will be thrusted upon us because it's a vision quest and it's been a really long time since we've had one of these. You can't even reject it and nobody comments at all. This quest could not be more simple. It is true. If you do not take this quest on, a different quest will be unlocked in the future. How many times have I said that? Good lord. <laughs> but trust me, there's really no downside of doing this now. The millisecond you warp to Satoru Marsh, which is where this place of judgment is, there's a lot of high Entian, you know, statues and such are in the area. Oh no, she fell on her bum! It's more of her side, but... Is that go go guarding the statue? I, I never expected it to be guarded. It appears I cannot proceed with my research. Sorry, Narath. Sorry, Ruthen. And then she dies. Well, we should probably go put a stop to that. Unfortunately for us, the area in which she fled to, and come to think of it, you know, I'm sorry, sorry, Charlotte. I really do not want to keep doing this. Shulk is just so much faster. The area that she fled to is actually all the way up there, guarded by level 89 monkeys. How she even got to this point? You got me. There he is, the big stupid monkey in the place of judgment. Luckily for us, he is not a super high level. Instead, he's just level 35. Surrounded by level 80s. No, literally surrounded by level 80s. Get over here. Crap. He, he, that guy's coming. Oh, dumb. Uh, let's just make this quick. He, um, is surprisingly doing a lot more work than I thought. I blame AI Melly. Sorry, not sorry. It's just the way things are. There we go. Ryan helping us out and beating that uh, monkey almost as uh, faster than Shulk. Gosh. He's finally hitting critical mass. Over here is Talia, who's like, hmm, me. yes, me, I, I, maybe I don't want to deal with that. In case you're curious, since she does visit this area very, like, for a very, like, a small amount of time, she does have some unique trades in case you're somehow still looking for quad wag bing, bings. I do not know how you came to know my future, but you prevented me from becoming seriously injured. I must offer you my gratitude. I feel I can trust you enough to explain why I came to these ruins, not long ago, I discovered an ancient book, Narath and Ruthen, and then I formed a research group to study it. The book told of a war god, Faith, that existed long ago. Have you seen the statue above the entrance to the palace? It is based on the war god, but it is only a copy. Right now, I'm trying to determine whether the war god Faith arose, so finding the original statue would be greatly help our research. We've deciphered half of the book. The text indicated the original war god statue was in Satoru. However, the statue I found here was not the original either. My actions were premature. First, I should decipher the entire text. I may ask for your help when the time comes. I hope that I can depend on you in the future. Many thanks for everything you've done and killing that monkey for me. Goodness, I could have taken him. Indeed, you could not. I get that, though. She was kind of jumping the gun. Just, you know, you're really excited. You think, ah, oh, a breakthrough for the culture of the Hyentia. It's going to be ever so cool. I assume this is the War God copy they were talking about. It looks kind of similar to other things in the series, but I think that's just kind of coincidental. He looks cool. I wonder what he was a War God of. Maybe we'll find out if we continue the quest line. Anyway, what were we doing? Oh yeah, fighting racism. Like, I'm not even joking. That's the next quest. Say hello to Ariely, I think, everybody. This quest yeah. is... Actually, a chain, even though it's a short chain, but speaking with her. <sighs> what a pickle. What should I do? Will you please help me? My daughter suddenly begun hating Homs and No Pawn. She even finds half blooded High Entia distasteful. Oh, so it's like that. She was perfectly fine with other races until a little while ago. Then she just suddenly changed. I have no idea why either. That's a Bit of a pain. Yeah, the understatement of the century. I'd like to help her if I could find out why this happened, but she doesn't seem to want to talk to me about it. Hmm, maybe she'll talk with you. Didn't she just say she didn't want to talk to Holmes? What? She hates other races. I've heard that High Entia hate conflict, but that's right, normally no one cares. Although I've heard of some very old texts. Texts which say things about only pure high entia being acceptable. Old mumbo jumbo, I say. 
Well, that's very open-minded of you, ma'am, but building bridges. Talk to this lady's daughter. She's really putting the xenophobia in Xenoblade. <laughs> I'm so very sorry for that awful pun. It's selfish of me to also ask you this. It's nothing to do with you. But nonetheless, thank you very much. No sweat. I'll be done before you know it. I don't know. It's usually pretty hard to change people's minds on this thing, but I admire Ryan's optimism. To locate Ariely's daughter, she's found just at nighttime right above her mum. Hi there. Man, she really doesn't like Homs, dude. Just like stone face, like didn't even look at me. So rude. I do not feel the need to speak with those from other races. Please leave me alone. And that is your cue to use Melly. <laughs> yeah, you can't do this quest without her. Howdy. What do you want? Uh, so Mother has been telling everyone she's worried about me. Well, frankly, who I choose to despise is none of her business. The wings on your head look... How can I say? Stunted. That means you're half arms, yes? And so I'd rather not speak with you. If at all possible. Jesus Christ. Perhaps if you were to bring me two pieces of marine marble, then I could be persuaded to tolerate your conversation. Keep it together, Melly. Don't start like kick her in the face. You can find marine marble at LFC. Even a school child knows that. <laughs> Goodness me. I see it's not just your wings that are stunted. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, if you want to find this item real quick, all you have to do is trade for it. Nearby, the Eresy, uh, well, that's not Eresy, is it? Hovering Reef 4, your girl Shallon has got your back. Trades for these, easy peasy. I'm not too sure on the amount of uh, affinity you need, but chances are if you're doing this quest, you already have like level 4 or level 3, so you should be totally fine. Here's your marbles, lady! Oh, you brought them? You people travel together, yes? Despite being of different races? Frankly, I cannot understand it. Very well, I'll grace you with a small amount of my time. I'll tell you why I can't stand the other races of Bionis. It all started with something quite trivial, to be honest. That half-wit, Vidian, broke my headwing decorations. And that night, as I slept, I heard a voice in my dreams. The Bionis itself spoke to me. It said only those of pure high entier blood are worthy. Uh-huh, the Bionis is talking to you. <laughs> The Bionis deem to create us, the High Entia first. Those savage harms are quite simply a joke. No offense. As I'm sure you're aware, Vidion's blood is tainted by those savages. So she got jealous of my beautiful headwings and decorations. Clearly, she must have stolen them to smash them out of spite. Can't expect anything more, considering her heritage. God, reading this just, uh, just makes me uncomfortable. God damn. <laughs> But it doesn't really matter. This marine marble is nicer than my old decorations. I suppose I could forgive, Vidion. That's why you're talking to me in the first place, after all, right? Uh, so in case you just didn't piece that together, she had a dream, and the Pionis told her only high entia blood are worthy. Because her friend broke her earrings. I mean, they're not earrings. Those are like clamps for your wings, but yeah, I'm sorry, miss. This might be a little trickier than we first well, thought. She's long gone. But Bionis told her that. I can't believe it. Now you mention it, I do recall her having bad dreams one night. And I get the feeling that wasn't the very day she changed. How very frightening. Anyway, at least we've gotten to the bottom of this now. Well, with some help, I mean, we listened. and uh, Yeah, I don't know what we can do for her, honestly. Right. I'll go talk to Lesunia. She cannot be allowed to think like this in this day and age. I just hope she listens to me. Well, I mean... The Bionis is basically the god of their world, so it's like, Mom, you think you're above God? Get out of my face. I don't know if that's going to go any well, but the quest continues with, well... Vidion, actually. Honestly, Vidion is really in the corner of Alchemoth. So much so, it's really hard to see her on the map. But your clue for this quest is that, yeah, their affinity chart between these two, her former friend, and uh, to say they have some static will be an understatement. Let's get her side of the story. 
Lighthouse manager Shalene used to be my classmate. She always got good grades, always the top of the class. So I thought that she'd end up working at the Imperial Palace. She volunteered to manage the lighthouse instead. Maybe it's because she likes the sea so much. Or maybe she likes something else about the lighthouse. Maybe some other employees. <laughs> I'll stop. You were the guys that helped Lucinia, right? Help is a stretch, but... You know, to get over a dislike of the other races of Bionis. I heard it was a group of homes, so I thought it must be you. After you did that, she started talking to me again. But she's really cold. Hmm. It's not the outcome we want at all, is it? I think it's all because of the wing decorations. That's why she's still giving me the cold shoulder. You see, I broke Lissunia's wing decorations. I got some for her which looked almost exactly the same, but she said she didn't want anything from a half high Entia. She never used to say nasty things like that. What happened? I want the old Lissunia back. I wanted to remember what she told me that night. So you're saying she wasn't like this before? She seems a little hard to seems a little hard to believe. Yeah, she didn't care if you were Homs or Nopon or whatever. Then out of the blue, she started only liking pure Hyantia. Uh, that's no good at all. And we need to collect a very specific key item: the Morning Dew Ice, which is only found near Bethalgar Pedestal. Is that how you say that? Bethalgar? I thought it was Belfogor. Whatever, it doesn't matter. You're going to help me? Oh, thank you. I need some morning dew from Valak Mountain. You can only get it at dawn, when the ice sparkles. It should be near, however the crud you say it, pedestal. Okay, sounds easy. And well, here's the thing, it is definitely not. It is, I don't want to say a pain in the butt, but when they mean at dawn, they mean literally at dawn. The uh, way I like to go about this may not be ideal, but I think I got a decent strat. Change the time to 5 a.m. and pick up the orb. Yeah, that's it. I told you it was pretty decent. I mean, it could be a little better, but, you know. Hey. Oh, wow. You actually found it. That was a lot faster than I thought. It's exactly the same as I remembered. I'll use this to make Lucinia something really nice. I sure hope it doesn't melt. Oh, no, I broke it. Oh, well. Hopefully she doesn't notice the cracks. <laughs> it's literally just ice. Like, what? All finished. Could you give it to Lucinia for me, please? And remind her of what happened that night. Do you remember that one time with the... Uh, like, what, what, we don't have any context for this. Like, what are we supposed to make her remember again? This is from Virion. A headwing decoration. But only one of a pair. And wait, this is made of the morning dew ice. When we were very small, Virion and I... We managed to get lost on Valak Mountain during a school trip. I was really obsessed with getting some morning dew ice. It was the trend at the time, you see. So we re ended up getting separated from the rest of the class. There was a raging blizzard. We couldn't see a thing. Somehow we managed to survive until morning. We kept on talking and talking, desperate not to fall asleep. And finally, when dawn came, we saw it. It was like diamond dust. It was so beautiful that I honestly thought I might have died. But there she was. By my side. <laughs> oh, Vidion! <laughs> it's thanks to Vidion I survived. If she hadn't been there, I would have lost consciousness. I know it. <laughs> and now I've called her a half-wit. Insulted her blood and heritage. <laughs> I've been such a fool. <laughs> How could I believe something so ridiculous and stupid? It makes no difference whether you're Homs, no pawn, or anything. We're all the same. I must apologize to Vidion. And to you, kind people, too. To cure bigotry, all you have to do is give people expensive hey. gifts. I'm just kidding, but... You, of course, that had to be something, right? Lissunia said she remembered what happened that night. Oh, I'm so happy. I hope I was some help. Yeah, no, you literally turned the friendship around completely. We've been doing that a lot here now, Kamoth, come to think of it. So Lissunia has finally returned to her old self. The truth is, I've always been embarrassed about something size of my wings they're just so small but that night when i spoke about it with lucinia she said she didn't care about that at all in fact she envied me she said they must be so much easier to maintain oh, i'm so happy right now thank you i really owe you i think melly was pretty fond of that quest chain as well as believe it or not that is the final quest that we can participate in alchemoth at this very moment 
and they've now repaired their relationship. Oh, goodness. Isn't it grand? They're friends again. I, I realized I went to the wrong high ante. So I got totally effed up. Like, you know what I'm saying. The issue is we are currently only four out of five stars on Upper Bionis. You may think, Johnny, after up. You have to play the game wrong. You have to have read a that. No, this is like the most you can do. And the reason for that will be revealed later. But uh, yeah, just a heads up. We're not doing bad. Every quest now come off done. There are some NPCs I need to speak with again to update their affinity links. And that may push us over the edge for Upper Bionis, but I kind of doubt it. At the end of the day, it's not a big deal. But there's still some things I actually want to take care of in Alchemy. So first things first, we already have Charlotte <laughs> and Millie in the party. How rare that is. Let's make it night one more time and find this heart to heart. Right over here in this gazebo-esque thing, which come to think of it is right next to a uh, drug club. Uh, don't worry about that. We can view ancient astrology. Oh gosh, I remember this one now, Jesus. Uh, I'll keep my comments to myself. Whatever's the matter, Sharla? Why are you standing here? The stars, they're beautiful, aren't they? Knowing that they're the same stars I see back home <laughs> makes me feel at peace. Yes, I feel it too. Melia, you know anything about fortune telling? Mm, of course I do. I know many things. It's about telling the future based on one's star sign. That's right. I thought only Homs knew about fortune telling. I know nothing of its origin, but practitioners have existed for countless generations. Amazing to think that people of old looked at the same sky as us. Quite amazing, yes. So do you believe in fortune-telling? Mm. Yeah, yes, I do. Is it unbecoming of me to dabble in such things? <laughs> no, 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 not at all, Melia. All girls love this stuff. Don't you worry about yourself. Oh, thank goodness. I always wondered, you know. Tell me, Melia, what's your star sign? The Rasphodus? How about you, Sharla? My star sign's the Perfumer. You and me have great compatibility, Melia. I'd guessed as much. <laughs> wow, Melia. You're even better at reading people than me. And hey, what are you trying to say, Monolith Girls love astrology? I mean, they might. Anyway, I feel like if I say anything else, I'm going to get in trouble. Listen, let's just move to F on. And, well, if you couldn't tell from that heart to heart, Charlotte's kind of missing home. So let's see how that's going. I mean, it's not the same home, but we're working on it. Now that we've been to Makanis Field and have the retro diode items and just a lot of items around like the fallen arm in general, we can finally get housing level four in colony six. Oh God, that's a lot of money. I gotta start selling some crap. But with this, we can invite some new refugees to the colony and just in general, like that's always a good thing to do, except for some key scenarios and dang, that's a big apartment. Oh my gosh, I forgot you had the no pun houses. That's so cute. Housing level increased by one whole digit. We built five houses. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, hopefully now some no pawn will want to come here and an achievement will be added. That's not all though. So, unfortunately the rest of the upgrades to Colony 6 are going to require future areas. AKA the next zone over. So we can't really do too much there, but there are two key NPCs we can invite right now if you have similar uh, prerequisites. It's mostly just a population of four and, you know, housing level four. So these two kind of coincide if at least you're following my guide. Unfortunately for us, we have to have Shulk in the lead to get this first uh, lady to join. And she is right where I needed her to be. If I recall, they're just going la 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 la. Ahem. La 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 la. Ahem. What, what, what the dump is going on here? Okay. I don't, I don't even know. I've had it. He makes me tag along when he hangs out with his friends. Then when I want to do something with him, he says he's busy. Why do I put up with him? And this love for second hole of a place. I wish a nice man would sweep me off my feet and take me far, far away. Or maybe I should... Just go find a place where men grow on trees. Uh, I think we have some dudes in Colony 6. Oh, Shulk, are you sweeping me off my feet? Oh, finally, a real man! 
Someone has responded to this girl's heartfelt pleas. I'll go and dump my current boyfriend right this second. Don't worry, everyone knows you're already taken. Uh, oh, oh, uh, what? But I'm surprised you've already lined up some potential boys. Move over, ladies. Rosemary's got first pick of the bunch. See you in the colony. How about that? Uh, I'm a homewrecker, apparently. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't seem to mind, just business as usual. <laughs> okay. So now that we have Rosemary, who uh, definitely will not cause any problems inside the colony. There's one more character we can get, and come to think of it, we've been able to, like, talk to this guy. I think we talked to him, like, the very beginning of the game. Mm, I don't know if that's true or not, but he definitely helped me out at some point in one of my playthroughs. Specifically with his traded items and... Yeah, just a heads up. You might want to, like, check everybody's trades right before they uh, head off. And God dang, bro. You lift. It's it's Papino, okay. everybody. Papino. My mates have been egging me on to dump this place and move on. Don't want to end up like some of the losers around here. I don't. Place with lots of people. Eh, that's where I want to go. No anywhere like that. Well, Mr. Loner, Colony 6 just hit 70 population. You reckon Colony 6 is for me? Yeah. Yeah, some of my mates heard about that place. Might take a chance, go meet some real nice people. If it don't work out, can always come back here. Cheers for the heads up, guys. And that does it. Papino, I want to get ASAP because, well... Aw, oh, come on! Enemies are attacking the colony's ether planners. Go help them. Okay. <laughs> colony 6 Defender Elite. This shouldn't take long. This is for an... You're up to me while I was trying to talk to Papino, you turd! The reason I wanted to get this guy ASAP is because he trades for the Dabu Corgi, which, in case you forgot, is Melia's favorite item. Just a heads up, I'm going to need a lot of these because, well, I've kind of been ignoring Melia. Not intentionally, but there's just no nice way of saying it. She does not fare the best inside the Machina zones due to her low HP, so... Now is the time to catch up, more or less. Okay, a couple items later, I eventually gave up on the Dauber Corgis because I thought I was close enough, and it turns out I was. I used some leftover flower items to bridge the gap between Rhine and Melia, so now they're pink level affinity. Yeah. So let's go see the heart to heart back in Althamal, shall we? We can view this stunning view again of Prison Island, but also, the final heart-to-heart -heart between Ryan and Melly, The breathtaking sight. It really is. Wait, aren't we fighting a war right now? Shouldn't we not be doing this? Eh, whatever. Check that out! How high are we? Man, Alchemoth, what a place! Careful, another step and you shall not be seen tomorrow. Uh, how on Bionis did you get an entire city to float? Amazing! It's quite simple, really. Alright, yeah, simple, she says. I can't get enough of this breeze, though. Man, makes me feel alive. Well, I like it too. Gazing across our beloved land, it's a sight like no other. All those fears and worries just seem to melt away. So you feel it too, eh? Reminds me of when I used to sneak out of school. I'd go watch the clouds go by from the highest hill in the colony. I have to say that sounds just like you, Ryan. So come looking for me. We'd argue about me skeeving off. He'd eventually give up and we'd hang out and the school was over. But I cannot imagine Shulk being so... Uh, naughty. Look, Shulk's always been a bit of a rule breaker. <laughs> Just like me. Uh, well, I guess I get that impression. When the Telethia surprised me in the tomb and you all appeared, your presence shocked me greatly. Homs had never sat inside the tomb before. We've been breaking down barriers like that for years. I heard he even argued with my brother. He sensed I was in danger and persuaded him to let you find me. Uh, what is it, Ryan? I'm the one who stood up to Callie and not Shulk! What the? Ah! It, it was you, really? And it was Dumban that sealed the deal. So it wasn't Shulk after all. I say, uh, did I say something wrong? N no, not at all. But I'm no longer in the mood to chat. Let us leave. <laughs> you mean Shulk didn't go to my valiant rescue? Uh <sighs> it's fine, I guess. Anyway, 
Melee just cannot catch a break. Oh god, if only you knew. Anywho, with pretty much all of our duties in Alchemoth. Let me check real quick. Did we did we get oh, no, we, there's one thing we have what we still got to do. The final location. We never actually took this teleporter to get the last one. It's not really that important, but hey, if you're actually going for 100% completion, yeah. This is it. Revelation Hall where Melia I I think this is where she had her like audience. You know when she she had the mask on, it wasn't actually her. Y'all remember that crap? I do. But yeah, that's it. That we we got it all. We got 100% clear on this area. Except for one thing, but eh, that's like a technicality. But we're still not done. I would want to squeeze a couple more quests into this episode, so we're going back to Frontier Village. And this time around, actually completing almost everything here too. God dang, I'm on a roll. Starting with the most annoying one first, we have Tati. Tra la 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 la, dinner time. Shoobity doobity ta, taste is sublime. Bibi bidi cha cha, I like to rhyme. Boopity doopity do, all of the time. I finally found someone who's worse at singing than even me. Tell me, why are you like this? Oh my goodness. Have your friends ever seen them? Singing vegetables and singing insects on Bionis. They say they're out there, somewhere. What would you do with them if you got them? Are you starting a choir or something? No, oh, me, 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 wonderful idea. Now, Tati has something to aim for. la di do 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 la di da da Around Bionis are some special creatures and plants. Their names start with words. Humming or rumble. Please gather them for Tati. Tati needs them for making song. But Tati is in need in village, so cannot go out to find. Can friends go get? You got it, dude. Musical genius. Tati, ladies and gentlemen. There's no way around it. This quest sucks. There's a reason I've been putting it off for so long. And to find... How many items is it total? Like, 16 items? It is ridiculous. He'll leave it to us. You got it. All right. Tra-la-la-la. Eight items in all. <sighs> Such a pain. So there's things that hum, and then things that rumble. It is totally not eight items in all. Well, I guess it is, but the quantities are different. Simply put, some of these items I do already have, but seeing as we're so late into the game, you should have Central Bionis pretty much maxed. So simply trade or locate these items to wrap up the quest. This is probably the biggest example of why Definitive Edition effing rules. Because these items are all over the place. You had to go to Ether Mines, Bionis Lake, Satora Marsh. Friggin' dude! It's too much! Oh ho ho ho! Humming bits and rumble bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah! New and wonderful melodies. A flood of exciting sounds. Listen to that phrasing. New melodies of inspiration. We're so happy for you. Oh my gosh. La 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 lo lo la lo la la lo lo la lo la So very grateful to all of you. And that's it. It's actually three quests in one, and the quick step three gem is not bad, but oh boy. That would have been nice before we actually initiated the quest. And speaking of being nice, the developers of my, this game, Monolith Soft, they really, really did not want you to find every quest in the game. I truly do feel like that in this particular scenario. Here's the deal, okay? Some quests have to be initiated with the affinity chart. We all get that, right? But some quests can only be done so if you talk to somebody at the right time. That's brutal. This is one such example. At 1300, if you come to the archeology span center and talk to, where is she? Oh, she's so tiny. Pachipa. Me? Yeah. Dead upon somewhere on Bionis Lake. He caught Geru Geru. Friends know him. Pachipa worry about Daddy Pon. If you may recall, there was a lone no pawn on Bionis Lake. The upper Bionis Lake. You remember him. Come on, he, he was blue. Me. That's him. Pachipa's Daddy Pon work on Bionis Lake with no pawn merchants. But terrible turtles steal Daddy Pon's things. Hey, what's up with that? How could a tortoise steal something? It's really slow. Pachipa, Mommy Pond, stop eating because she's so worried. So Pachipa want friends to go help Dadapon. 
some immoral turtle snatch your father's things, you say? Surely your father could easily have resisted a mere turtle. Turtle monsters like to chase. Turtle monsters like to race. Those turtles you speak sound like wicked monsters. We shall take care of them. We shall deliver your father from the danger he finds himself in. How noble. Dad upon name Garu Garu. Naughty turtles steal Dad upon's goods. Friends go bash naughty turtles. You got it. Dad upon in trouble. Literally just killed two turtles. That's it. But where are said turtles? Well, Pachi Pub will say something like Vanilla Hill. I don't know. And there is no place like that in Bionis Lake. So I don't know what the frick she's talking about. Oh, dude, she meant Valeriera Hill. It makes sense. The little kid couldn't pronounce that. But yeah, remember these turtle NPCs we've not really touched on at all. This is our opponent. How did he steal anything? How, how is the turtle holding it? Yeah, the game makes no sense, but pfft, neither do I, so that's fair. Well, Patchy, we've done the deed. Patchy makes her sound like a parrot of sorts. Let to come from Dadapon. No more naughty turtles stealing Dadapon's goods. Now mommy can eat to our heart's content. Yay! <laughs> Thank you, friends. Now my mama pun not feel bad anymore. Also, this quest can continue. Yeah, this quest is effing horse crap. So to continue this quest, you have to talk to her again at 1400. Not even kidding. To get a new affinity link. Pippi keep practicing go boing boing. What the f- huh? Pikiki want to be able to jump to Pachi Pachi's house in one leap. And that will give you the next quest. It is so specific. My god. There ain't no way you're figuring that out without a guide. Let her arrive from Daddy Pond again. Tell me more. Hmm? What does it say? Is it too private to ask? That is like Daddy Pond's some mythical empress. Catch it. Catch it. Patchy Pa want empress. Well, so do I, but <laughs> all the good ones are taken. I... I read about the empress in a book once, but I always thought it was just a made-up creature. What are you going to do with it if you catch it? Are you going to eat it? <laughs> Friends, mean fry it in oil or steam it with pollen orb? No, 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 no. Friend being silly. You can't eat Amboris. Hmm. Watch me. <laughs> Pachi Pato, Piki Piki and Kuriki about that upon the Empress. Piki Piki and Kuriki say no such thing as Empress. They say it fairy tales. Hmm. That upon would never lie to Pachi Pat. Friends, catch Empress. So everyone believe Pachipa? You got it. It definitely exists. Is this girl's father a liar? Or is this mythical insect actually out there? I guess we'll find out. First thing we gotta do is actually locate her dad and get some more info. Cause I mean, he's on the Bionis leg, that makes sense. He'd be seeing it and he could point us in the right direction. Tell me everything you know about this so-called Empress. Pachipa want proof that mythical Empress is real? Mythical Empress is real. Not the place. Not the place. Why will little pond not believe? She is winning cave. Jump down, and that's got us to go. But Mythical Empress is legend. Proof very difficult to find. Zero zero no. If you bash a rock doing this, you can get her ornament. That should be all the proof she needs. Okay. So kill this <laughs> probably endangered creature. Sure, all right. To get to where he's talking about, go from Zack's outpost and and just keep heading south till you fall in a hole. I wonder where this hole is. Oh god, it's right here. Ah! How's my acting there? Really believable, right? Anywho, <laughs> this quest as a uh, difficult is it, like it's just so hard to find. Not the actual bug. Just getting Pachipa to be like, mm, this boy trying to jump. Prove him wrong that the thing exists. I hope you're sitting down for this, because I'm going to blow your mind. Wait one sec, friends. Where is Mythical Empress? Is Empress so small, Pachi Pat cannot see? Uh, not exactly. It's pretty giant, actually. So friends did not see Empress with their own eyes. All oh, too bad. Friends found Empress ornament. What? That must mean Empress exists. Ah, uh, well, it definitely doesn't exist anymore. That upon was not a liar. Well, I'm glad you believe in your father. Master Creaky and Pipiki. You got it. And that pretty much is the end of that. 
It definitely does exist. Now we know for sure. And with that quest complete, not only will the affinity chart update a little bit to reliable dad. <sighs> I just hope one day I can be considered reliable. Goodness. But also, yeah, there's a lot more links that have opened up with other supporting characters that we can now create, which is pretty cool. Likes a bit. Oh, goodness, Papiki. Does someone have a crush? Okay, I'll stop teasing. Our chart is coming along great, and I, for one, could not be more pleased. Still annoyed about this and this. They're four out of five. Pains in the butt. I feel like we've done the least in Central Bionis, but then again, my memory of these videos is not the best. With that completed, though, we did some heart-to-hearts, and we actually wrapped up a whole bunch. Believe it or not, there's only a few quests missing here in Frontier Village, too. So next time on Xenoblade Chronicles, we're going to take care of some of those, and also see what's going on in Colony 6. It sure has been a little while, huh? But yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and see you next time. Bye.